In this lesson, we're going to explore the purpose of Microsoft Purview. So Microsoft Purview is built on the previous Azure Purview and Microsoft 365 compliance solutions. So we have our Microsoft Purview. And its goal is really focused on the idea of we have this entire data estate for our organization, and we want to be able to understand what is the data, where is the data, what has it gone through. As so what it enables us to do is we can think about our data can be in many different places. So for example, if I think of my organization's overall data estate, well, that data could be in Microsoft 365 and its various solutions like SharePoint, uh, Teams. I could have Azure services, and in Azure, maybe that's blob storage, maybe it's data lake, maybe it's databases like SQL. It could be other clouds and their solutions as well. For example, I could think about uh, Amazon Web Services and its S3 storage services. I might have data in Power BI. I might have data in other SaaS solutions. I may even have data on premises. And so we have all these different data solutions and Microsoft Purview supports a huge number of those. If we go and look at its documentation, we can see it talks about supported data sources and file types. So here we can see, well, in Azure, for example, Blob, Cosmos DB, Data Explorer, Data Factory, and we can even see some of the different types of capabilities, its ability to have classifications, live view, lineage, either the history of the data, I can label the data, access policy data sharing. Then we can see through the different types of database supported file systems. Here we can see, for example, the Amazon S3, different services and applications. So a huge different range of data sources is available for us. And so what we want to be able to do is I need to understand, and this is the key point of what Purview is doing, where is my data? And what data is it? Is it important data? Because fundamentally what we want to be able to do is avoid data exposure. And the way we avoid data exposure is to know exactly where that sensitive data is and then take according actions. Maybe it's labeling it with a highly classified label. And then from the label, I could do other data leakage prevention actions, especially with things like Microsoft 365. So that is the core goal of this. Now, when we think about Microsoft Purview, there are two versions. There is a free version, and then there is an enterprise. Now, there are different sets of capabilities. If we were to go and look at the portal, we can see I have a few options available to me, but this is the free version. So I have the data catalog. I could do data sharing, which is in preview at time of recording, but it's very limited. But if I was to go and look at what's different between free and enterprise, really the key point here is in terms of the functionality, the enterprise edition will expose all of the different applications. Whereas free only gives me the data catalog. And even within the data catalog, it's limited to Azure Blob Storage, Data Lake Storage Gen 2, Azure SQL Database, and Azure Subscriptions. So it reduces what types of capabilities and data sources I can use, in addition to various other types of limitations. And so as I mentioned, there are different capabilities that are enabled through Microsoft Purview. Now, one of the key capabilities we have with Microsoft Purview is we can scan the data in place. So the first layer of the solution, give myself a lot of space over here, is the idea of the data map. And a lot of solutions make you have to bring and import the data into whatever the solution is to be able to view it. You don't have to do that here. So it can do a scan in place. I don't have to move everything over. And so those 
First thing we often want to do is classify the data. And there's 200 plus built-in classifications. I can create custom classifications, which are built on patterns. Um, N number of numerics, and then maybe a slash, and an alpha, I could detect a social security number or a credit card. So first thing we want to do is classify the data. So we know, hey, this data has social security numbers, this has credit cards, whatever that might be. I then may want to apply sensitivity labels, which is metadata added to the data that I could then act on based on the classification. So, hey, I find a social security number, I'll add a label of PII or highly sensitive. Those labels could then be used to trigger other actions. For example, maybe through M365 it is data leakage prevention. It might be data retention. It might be, hey, make sure you delete the data after n number of days. It can also do things like data lineage. So the data came in through here, it went through these transformations, it's been saved over here and here. It can give me insights into my data because it's now got this complete view of everything happening in the environment. The next thing I can get out of this is a catalog. So I can think of the catalog. And this is gonna enable me to think about a normalized view of all of the data. If I think that data may go through many different systems or environment, maybe it gets slightly renamed in some environments, uh, maybe it's duplicated, it's moved between all these different systems, what the catalog will do is normalize that. I'll get one view for a particular piece of data, no matter where it's stored, uh, no matter how it's duplicated, even if there's slight renames. So it's gonna make it very easy for me to get a good understanding. Then what we can do, and at time of recording, this is in preview, is data sharing. Now, this is specific to Azure. And I could think about, well, in Azure, I have a source. So I have some storage of my data. Now, in this case specifically, it's talking about blob or ADLS Gen 2, which is blob with a hierarchical namespace on top of it. And what I can do now is I can send an invitation. So if I'm sitting over here, I could send an invite to someone in another organization. And if they accept that invite, what happens is they have a target storage account. And what it does is I can do in place access. And what that means is, it's not duplicating the data, there's no replication happening. I create a new storage account in my, as the target, the person that's having the invite to view this data. And when I look at it, I will see the content, but the data only resides in here. So the data is not leaving my data governance boundary, for example. What I have here is read only so I can't change it, but absolutely I could run things like my own analysis against it, uh, against my view of that data. And as the owner of the data, I could revoke access to that at any time. So that's very, very powerful. The other thing I can do here is I can think about policy. So with policy, I can create data access policies to control at a large scale view of my entire data estate. Anything under the governance of Microsoft Purview, I can create these policies. So it's access to the data. It's large scale provisioning of the access. And it's this entirely new data plane permission that is actually external to the all up data store. And then the final thing, is estate insights. Now I can think of this for the main governance stakeholders, which are only going up a level here, maybe your C-level executives, and it's given give me insight into the entire data estate, my compliance. Um, it's gonna give me actionable information that, hey, here's where I have maybe sensitive data, here's how it's been used, do I want to drive some type of operation on that? 
And of course, when I have all of this, I can run analytics against it using its native capabilities, using external tools that I would want to leverage. So this is the key goal of Microsoft Purview. It's all about bringing this governance, this insight into my entire data estate without having to import it all into some other tool. It gives me the ability to classify, I understand what data is out there and where it is. I can then do labeling, which can then drive actionable tasks upon it, and overall a set of capabilities to make the best use of my data. This concludes the lesson.